Welcome, everybody, to episode 196 of The China Show. And you guessed it, today we're talking about Piano Gate. <laughs> Is that what we call it? We didn't even discuss what we're going to call this. Hashtag Piano Gate. <laughs> I guess. Free speech piano. I don't know what you want to call it, but... Uh, uh, just play us a song. You're the <laughs> piano man. Yeah, I'm just got so, some joke in there. It's actually sing us a song here, the piano. Oh, yeah. Anyway. That's weird because the piano man should be playing. I think it's in those little dive bars. The guy plays the piano and sings at the same time. You know that? <laughs> we were just talking about this <laughs> earlier. And just harking back yeah. to our conversation. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this is going to be the main topic of today's show. We're just going to get yes. right into it, guys. Um, it's a very big and important topic to cover. And we've been holding back because we've been collecting all the information and we yeah. want to give you as most uh, objective kind of uh, take on the whole thing as we can. Yeah. So let's start out very quickly um, with what's new. And this is where we talk about what's new in China. Um, and of course, this specifically with regards to China is the whole Piano Man thing. So we're going to jump directly into Piano Man and uh, we got a little something here for you. Our little friend over here discovered a new song. Sir, you are not the same age. What a wonderful no, song. Right How come I've never heard it before? Stop touching her! Please, please don't touch her. Please, please don't. Don't. Yeah. No, please. please do not touch her. How come you I've never heard it age. Please, 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 please. Stop touching, her. touching her! You are not the same age. Please do not touch her. Please, please do not touch her. What a wonderful song. <laughs> okay. So, um... Yes. Make us big, because this is... I'll, let's I'll explain the context of it. If you are not uh, alive, <laughs> if you've just woken up from the crypts, mm -hmm. uh, you will may not you may not have heard this uh, story. Basically, a dude in the UK, he's a YouTuber, live streamed live himself playing piano, right? Yeah. The be-all and end-all is he was confronted by some Chinese people who told him not to film. Right? Yeah, and to delete their and images. And to delete their images. And it became a international... I can actually safely say, and we were going to say this in the beginning, we can say it now, this is an international incident It now. is. It's blown up to astronomical proportions. And it's very interesting. We have to bring it all back to the most watched TV show in the entire world, because this yes. is what sparked it all off. And this is weirdly, and I'm not trying to be one of those guys like, why is no one covering this? But there's this. there's an angle to this that is not... It's not only criminally underreported, but it's the whole crux of this entire thing. Yes. And you've seen it. All yeah. the news outlets haven't really talked about this. No. Nope. All of the coverage hasn't talked about this. This absolutely, positively is the most important aspect. Yes. Wouldn't you so, agree? I would agree 100%. So there is a little thing called the Chinese New Year Gala, which happens once a year. And it is the most watched TV show in the entire world. In fact, here's some stats for you. I'll get us down into the corner. 1.296 billion people, okay? The total audience of the Chinese media group CMG 2022 Spring Festival Gala reached a record of 1.296 billion at home and abroad, with 7.133 billion touches on their multiple pl oh, platforms. It's like a view, basically. So views, yeah, okay, impressions, I guess. Um, so this is the Chinese New Year Gala. Now, the reason why it is so popular and why so many people watch it is it's almost a mandatory viewing wouldn't you say um it i mean in a way it's just it's not it's mandatory because you just there's nothing else to put on you you do it because it's a tradition yeah uh, it's not mandatory as in the government yeah, yeah. says you must watch it but, but it is in a but way you kind of have to watch it I, i'll put it to you this way yeah. even if you tried not to you're still going to yes because it's everywhere you go to someone's house yeah you it's go always out on. if you went to a shop which there, there'll be no one open but if there was someone it would be on yes if there's a tv out in public <laughs> it's playing it if there's a a big screen out in public it's playing it yes. and if you're at any one's house you can switch the channels and every channel is pretty much playing it yes it's all you can watch um so you have a massive audience and to give you a taste of what the chinese new year gala is kind of all about let's show you it's a big pageantry thing they have singing in fact maybe <laughs> you spit you spit it up yeah because it's, cause, cause it's well, the thing is it's it's i'll be <laughs> honest <laughs> yeah, it's pretty it's pretty um <laughs> Not interesting, to be honest. There's Jackie Chan up here. Okay, you know? I want to say, if you've never seen the gala, it's mad boring. Yeah, but that's it's like, what I wanted to say. It's very boring. No, and I, I'm not here yeah. to protect anyone's feelings. Like, yeah. it's it's pretty, it sucks. Because, it's but it's just one of those things that you have on. And I'll be, I'll be honest, I'll make an equivalent. Yeah. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Year Without a Santa Claus. What's that? Those kind of claymation no. Christmas movies. Okay, I don't know The Year Without a Santa Claus. Okay, it's the same as Rudolph. Okay. You know, it's that 
<laughs> yeah, like, it's just stop motion. Those suck, <laughs> sure. right? Fight yeah. me all you want. Mm-hmm. Those movies are terrible. Just it's They're a like tradition. Bottom of the barrel quality, right? But it's yeah. a tradition. You put it on, and it's kind of yeah. like that. It sucks, but you just put it on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, okay, so they have a big thing, and it's like a variety show. They have song and dance, and they here you can see, you know, when you're at home, it's on TV. And you can't get away from it, no matter... If you've been in China during this time, you know that you would have seen the Chinese New Year Gala. Now, of course, the previous one, okay, with the beginning of 2023, because it normally happens in February, okay, coming up soon, um, was Year of the Rabbit. Yes. Okay. (laughs) So am I? That's a nightmare. I know. So, of course, it's all rabbit-themed. What's up with the hose? They have, like, this oversaturated footage with a CG rabbit that's so so going into propaganda sp- though yeah but look going into space to show china as a space station mm. and so it's all about propaganda right it it's is. all about these variety shows they have comedy skits um little plays which are never funny and are just veiled propaganda about how china spouses family values absolutely i mean yes we could do a deep dive <laughs> yes. on the, the the spring uh, festival gala but we're not doing that today <laughs> yes as long as you all know that it is the biggest most watched tv show in the entire world and we gave you some stats earlier 1.3 billion people watched the, the tldr 2022 one. Yeah, yeah the tldr is if you just joined the chinese new year gala is the most watched show in the world and it's basically rudolph the red-nosed reindeer stop motion animation um, in quality it sucks yeah but everyone watches it and i saw some claims in the chat here oh no one watches tv anymore and that's simply true that is true in china for the most part people but it's are streamed. mostly glued to their phones however it's still watched that is yes. the one thing that everyone's watching yeah uh so it'll be streamed to your phone yep. people watch it and of course chinese new year is all about family right yeah so everybody gets together for a family dinner yeah. And the Chinese New Year Gala will always be on in the house when people are having yes. dinner together. Yes. So even if you're, if you're a, a like a hip young person who's not interested in this stuff, you're still going to be there with your family yeah. at your grand, grandma's like gathering or whatever, yeah. with your family watching this. So everybody gets to see it. Now, they have all sorts of skits. Like, for instance, I just wanted to show a quick one here that they had this past year where they have like a musical thing where they'll get people from across the world all in different countries to kind of take part in this musical thing. Okay. Now, what is this? <laughs> I just... I, we promised this has to do with a piano game. <laughs> yes, I just... How did they get Dracula? <laughs> they got literally Count Dracula to sing in this New Year Gala. Dude, this, he looks like a freaking Dragon Ball character. <laughs> He's epic. I love his hair and his outfit. Anyway, does they he get... not look like a Final Fantasy villain? <laughs> yeah, he does. Epic. He's yeah. from Serbia. Yeah, from Serbia. Basically, they take all the countries that suck up to the Chinese <laughs> government and they're like singing propaganda songs. Yeah, they had or uh, whatever, pa- a song Pakistan country, right? and, you know, they had New Zealand over yeah. here. Uh, and they kind of mix it all together. This is one of the types of things that they do for the Chinese New Year Gala. That guy's, pfft, who knows where he is. Um, That's like South American Barney the Dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, they just basically get people from across the world to be a part of the New Year Gala, whether it's in a musical skit like this or whether it's them saying like, uh, Happy Chinese New Year from London, Happy Chinese New Year from Paris, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. But they have different programs. Yeah. And the reason we're showing you this is that's what was going on. Yeah. Okay. That's what was going on here is you had an entourage um, of Chinese people in the station. They're the St. Pancreas. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I, and yeah. you can fight me on this too. But every time I read this in the headlines, yeah, it was Saint like St. Pancreas. Pancreas Station. Yeah, it's King's Crossing. Bro. Yeah. What a terrible saint. Yeah. Is that the saint of di- diabetes and insulin production? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Bro, Obviously, it's St. Pancreas. saint of diabetes. Dude. Obviously, it's St. Pancreas. So yeah. I'm sorry for butchering yeah. that, you know, but that's how it sorry. goes. Um, uh, anyway, so... <laughs> saint Liver over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. They were over there waiting to use the piano for their little introduction or their little segment of the Chinese New Year Gala. Yes. That's what has been revealed. That's what they were there to film. Yes. Okay. Now... Um, as we all know, the previous year was the the year of the rabbit, right? Yes. So what do you think 2024 is going to be? Year of the what? Well, I think this footage of Piano Gate will tell us. Hmm. Don't you think? Oh, what's that? 2024, year of the dragon. Again, have not seen anyone talk about this. <laughs> Interesting. Well, there he is. I mean, look, you're going to be part of this whole New Year gala. Mm-hmm. You have to wear the, the, the Chinese New Year 
regalia. And here it is, the Year of the Dragon, as you can see on his uh, scarf. And I presume that the other red scarf, some of them flipped over, have the dragon on it too. Yes, I mm -hmm. will say, out of all the Chinese zodiacs, by the way, in the chat or in the comment section, let us know what Chinese zodiac you are. Yep. <laughs> uh, because I think there is tier. We should have a we should have a tier list of Chinese zodiacs because dragon would absolutely be S tier. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so if, cool. How cool would it be to be born in year of the dragon? Very jealous. And imagine if you were a pig or a rat. Yeah, the rat sucks. <laughs> to be in a rat. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That sucks. I know. It's... A rat or a pig? Yeah, I know. It's not cool. No. Uh, what is yours? Tiger. Oh, okay. I'm That's kind of cool. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> I'm the monkey. Oh. Monkeys, yeah. monkeys got some cool connotations in China, though. Just sit in a monkey tree king. and throw turds at people, I guess. Bro, the monkey king is like a <laughs> yeah. magic staff and stuff. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty epic. Anyway, so yeah. all of that Both aside, of us are not too bad. We're not yeah. rat or pig. Yeah, that's just as long as you, <laughs> all the rats and pigs out there. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Lost. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, so let's get on with it. Okay, so again, there you can see it's for the the Chinese New Year event, um, and it's since come out that they were filming for the Chinese New Year gala. Okay, yeah, it's been reported in multiple um, outlets, so you can actually, we've got some um, articles linked below. You can go and yeah. check out. So there they were. I'll, uh, can I read the quote? Yes, please go for it. When a British pianist performed you gotta be careful with that word yeah. performed live at a train station in london i believe that was saint pancreas train station um he was stopped by a group of chinese people holding chinese flags who claimed to be filming the spring festival gala they claimed that he was filming the spring festival gala because of his image rights they also accused him of race and racism and threatened to sue him um and then it goes on and on we'll we'll be quoting this a few times oh you're like that's some kind of translation that's a translation okay yeah. Yeah, I, that, to, I mean yeah that wasn't yeah so you're translating I, from a yeah i have the original article sure, in the sure. description it is it is in chinese okay i'm translating um so that the majority audience will be able to understand okay. that anyway <clears throat> good go ahead. that was All from right. rfa cantonese okay cool so anyway um there they are filming and and we all know by now what happened but we're going to give a quick recap just so we can bring everybody up to speed. All right, here he is playing. His name is um, Do Dr. K or Brent Kavanaugh, I believe. Brendan, yeah. Bre Brendan Kavanaugh, sorry. And he does live streaming stuff, and he goes and does his boogie-woogie piano around the place, as he calls it. I hate that and name, by the way, boogie-woogie. Yeah. So he live streams. <laughs> yeah. He's gotten into a couple of tussles before and being kicked out, and there's yes. been a couple of things, but this is what he does. And, uh, you know, power to him. It's public. You can go and a do that kind of pianist. thing. A massive pianist. Yes. I like a very popular pianist. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, no, no, no. Can, can the Chinese Japanese have a go? So oh, yeah, of course. Mind. Of course, we've got the Chinese here. You told me to. I think it's because we're here for Chinese TV as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, did you think as all of us in your cameras? Uh, are we, are we, uh, I don't know. Are we allowed? Well? No, no, no. We're, we're not allowed. Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're not allowed. Uh, just, just making sure you don't. Okay. So anyway, this is how it started. This is how it yeah. started. There's footage of before this happening, where he was joking around with them, and uh, you know, being very friendly. They were all being very friendly to each other. So we have to give some context that everything was okay. Yeah. And, and then, then also the context is he's a YouTuber who live streams himself playing on public pianos. Yes. That's his shtick. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's a, he's a very talented pianist. He's a giant pianist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Not what happened next? Us. Yeah, because if you are recording us, that when we are saying this, you're still recording, and then we will put a legal action into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we will put a legal action really? into it. For what? We will. Legal I'm sorry, this is the but end of the conversation. This is all right, we're protecting, and that's it. But what right? I don't understand. Image right. Image right? Yeah, we're not sharing this are, image Are you right. from China? I, I, that's not a question. We, the only thing we are arguing is that yeah. we are protecting our own image right. You're not sharing. But this, we're in public. Yeah, exactly. No, no sharing. So we're not allowed no to share? No sharing. Yes, no sharing us. Share yourself, that's fine. No sharing us. Okay. No sharing. Uh, what, please share me. Oh, share yes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and if one day, but you see, like, the thing is, we, we're in a free, I'm really we're, sorry. We're on a schedule but, here. So that, me too. But we're in a free country, mate. That's true. We're you not are in, in a free country. China now, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is reasons now. Okay. So it devolved very quickly. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty straightforward what happened here. Started fairly civil. They didn't want their images out there. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people don't. Um, but the, the unfortunate reality is, is if you're out in public and somebody's live streaming, in a lot of countries, they're very, um, they're very much allowed to do so. Okay. Someone's live streaming. If you don't want to be on camera, then just walk away. 
You know what I mean? I hate to say this in China. Everyone's live streaming everything. Yes. All the time. There mm -hmm. is no privacy issues. No, and you're on camera anyway from the, the government the whole time. You can only really get away with taking someone down for privacy issues in Chinese court if you are very well connected. Yeah. You know, and if you're a political person in China, like you will win that, right? But oh, and yeah, listen, if you're a CCP, mem yeah. like a someone in the Communist Party, or if you're part of the police <clears throat> or something, of course you can stop people filming you all day and all night. Yeah. Um, you know, having filmed a lot in China myself and you too, we've been shut down many oh, times. Oh yeah, I mean it's part of the course. The thing is, like we've been filming, and some uncle of I, I remember I was filming in a in a park, and there's some nice like statues in a river and stuff, and I'm filming and. And one of those evil uncles saw me with a camera, ran off to get the security, and then they came back to ask me to, like, what am I doing and all that. And he was expecting that they would stop me. Mm -hmm. But after a conversation with him, they were like, no, he can film here. Mm -hmm. You know, because I wasn't filming anything sensitive. No. But there have been instances where I've been told to delete my footage simply because I filmed a government building yeah. without knowing it was a government, government sure. building, you know? Now, the counter to this is the... Mm -hmm. um, the counter to this is the situation in the UK where yeah. you are allowed to film in public yes. places. Um, and that's from what we've seen. We've been looking at the laws and I actually watched another uh, legal YouTuber. It was like uh, mm -hmm. something about the, uh, the law in the UK. Apparently that is fine. Yeah. Um, so that's where this got kind of dicey. But from a personal sentiment, like I, you know me, like mm -hmm. I'm very much against the whole like you need to put your life on live stream all the time this whole new kind of True. live streaming culture I, I just don't like that but that's my personal opinion right sure. it's not about the law the law sure. says that he what what this guy was doing brendan was 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 correct it was legal sure right? um and i think what it comes off as to the most most of the people watching this is that these guys that come in from from the chinese side of things they use this perspective like I'm not even gonna give you the time of day. We said no, and sorry, we're let's move along here. You can't do this, right? Let's let's get we're on a schedule here. Yeah, he said you we're on a schedule, mean? which is <laughs> which is a little ridiculous because it's a public piano that people are allowed to use. Yeah. You don't get to book it, you don't get to have a schedule that's you know, surrounds that particular piano. No. You don't get to do no, that. No, it's a public piano. Yeah, it's like whoever's there first uses it first. Sure. And then the next person uses it. Anyway, the mo besides more the important point. thing is the gala thing yeah, that we were getting yeah. to. Yeah. So here's the thing that really drives me kind of mad about this type of thing, right? He's playing. They were filmed in the background. They don't want to be filmed. They come over. They start to threaten him immediately with like legal action. Sure. Which is ridiculous, right? Because that's not how this works. Yes. Not in a free country, not in the UK where you can live stream. No. And then as soon as he's like said, are you from China? Well, are you from communist China? He says, sorry, this is racist now. Yeah. And this is the knee-jerk reaction. And this is something that I think the entire world needs to start to combat is this idea that using the word racist is like a catch-all. It's like a, a phrase you can use to win any argument and to shut anything down, mm -hmm. Spe especially when it's not. No, I mean, in this case, we're talking about a comparison where in the UK, you can legally do this. Mm -hmm. In China, you cannot, right? Yes. You can't, you, you know, like if you are doing something that the government doesn't want or the government wants to crack down on freedom of speech or wants to stop a stream or stop a video, that's where the UK and China differs. Yeah. So to make that point is an inherently correct point to make. There's yeah, nothing to say wrong that, about that. To say that, that you know, comparison. we're not in China. Yeah. Yeah. So let's play that little thing again. And if one day, but, like, the thing is, we, we're in a I'm free, really we're, sorry, we're on a schedule but, here. So that, me too, but we're in a free country, mate. That's true. We're, we're not in a communist free China now, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is racist now. Yeah, we're not in communist China now is suddenly racist. Mm -hmm. The thing is, China is communist. Yes. It's a factual statement. Okay. If you say communist China, we all know what you're talking about. We're talking about China that's ruled by the Communist Party of China. Yeah. The CCP or CPC or, or C -P -C -C. whatever you want to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway. Definitely nothing racist saying communist China, because it is. No, we'll delve but a bit more into that. immediately but. switching over to that's racist is the, the quickest, I don't know, demonstration that you're dealing with cowardice here. I mean, it, it works. Yeah, it like, does. it works, right? Yeah. Like, the, a lot of people would be like, 
okay and it even like look at what happened with the police officer we'll look yeah at yeah later, we'll look right? at that later anyway so i just wanted to point that out that that's the immediate like knee-jerk reaction mm. go to that to try to win the argument and try to get your censorship we're, to go we're on a schedule here guys yeah so yeah let's move, let's move on, on. <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying that. yeah in china but we're in, we're not in china no no i have my choice i'm no, but we machine. are in Britain, Great Britain. We're not in I, China. I say I'm also British. I'm also British, okay? I'm also British. You, you, I'm also British, but I don't want to use my email. You've got a Chinese flag there. It doesn't matter. Show me the Chinese flag. Why are you touching her? Stop touching her! Don't touch her, please. Do not touch her. Please, you are not the same age. Please do not touch her. Oh, Don't I, touch I, her, I, please. I just, wait, 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 it's like, I get that that's the meme phrase. Yeah, but, yeah. But what relevance is this? Is there now an age you have to be to touch someone? I don't understand. So you have to be the same age as... Oh, uh, okay. You, you, if you're the same age as someone, then you can touch them. Hey, we're not the same age. I'm older <laughs> than you. This is the new thing. Yeah. I, I think that's... Kind of uh, next time you bump into someone like at the bus stop or in the supermarket line or something, it's like, like we're well, you're not the same line at Wawa, and then yeah. you like bump into someone, and you're like, "How old are you?" Yeah. <laughs> 48? <laughs> We're not the same age. Yeah, exactly. And you win. That's kind of a ridiculous thing. I guess he was trying to infer that he's like a, a, a an old lech or something. You know, uh, yeah, like I an think old, that was the idea. An old pervert or yeah, something. Yeah, you yeah. you are not the same age. Yeah, he's an old ham Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Little secret, if you look at the women he touched, I think they probably are the same age. You never know. I, I think they kind of are very similar in age. And he didn't touch her, by the way. He touched the flag. Because he was trying to point out, is this, this is a yeah. communist flag. So he touches the flag. But then, yeah, they launched yeah. into the whole... Yeah, exactly. Don't the touch her. Don't, don't shoot him. Yeah, don't, don't touch her. Don't, don't touch her. Think, yeah. What's the problem? Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. Okay, this has been another point of contention. She said, don't shoot him. Okay, apologize. Are you in the Communist Party or something? Stop judging. Stop judging. Why? Yeah, but obviously what she meant to say is, don't shouting. Okay? Not yes. don't shooting. And if it was shooting, it's about filming. Yeah. yeah. I got to tell you guys, as somebody who doesn't speak Chinese as a native language, when I've gotten into heated arguments with people or mm. there have been situations where tempers have raised and there's adrenaline going, you mm. very often mispronounce your words. You very sure. often get your words wrong. Of course. You know, because you're not thinking that part of your brains that, that usually is there for, you know, reasoning and, and whatnot kind of goes away so you do make mistakes and i think in the heat of the moment she was trying to say stop shouting yeah she said don't shooting yeah. i know there was speculation that oh maybe someone's armed or something that's bollocks that's nonsense absolute rubbish no one was armed she just made a mistake with what she was saying. yeah i think it was it's a bit weird that like people's brains immediately went to like Oh, that guy was armed. Well, it's it's because you know this whole scary communist China entourage yeah. thing. I mean, that's like but that's a not true. Ridiculous. It's not it's not true. I mean, we're here to give you a little bit of reason to the situation. Yeah. So, I mean, the, let's just get back into it here, okay? So the don't shooting thing. Let's put that to bed. There were no guns involved here. No, that's, okay. That's ridiculous. That was just a little uh, misspeak on her behalf to say like stop shouting. She obviously was trying to de-escalate the situation. Yes. Okay. Because her friend, uh, the dude, kind of went a little overboard there. I will agree with Hu Han, who says all Americans immediately assuming everyone has a gun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, let's True. chill out, guys. This is St. Pancreas Station. Yeah, in, uh, exactly. Yeah, in anyway, in let's UK. continue on. Are you going to apologize? Are you in the Communist Party or something? Stop shooting. Stop shooting. Why? Why are you calling us communists? Why? This is a this is a very interesting part that happens here. So he's asking if they're in the Communist Party of China. So he, the the don't touch me guys like uh, why are you judging us? Why do you say we're communists? Yeah. Communist we got the flag of any country. Oh, yeah. Why are you discriminating a different country? I'm not discrimin why are you dis discriminating a different country? Why are you getting excited? Because you're, you're discriminating your in another country. How am I discriminating? Yeah, you are saying we're communists for holding a flag. Yeah, because you got a communist flag in your hand. Oh my God! Is that not? Is that please educate yourself. All right? So that's please not educate communist. Yourself. So that's not a communist flag. A country flag. is different from the political agenda. That's is, not the same thing. Is that matter. a communist flag? That's yes or no? Same, that, that's so not it's the not. Same thing. Yeah, because this is a reason. That's they are. He's being racist and calling us communists and all that thing. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Let's let's have an education. So because. 
I'm yeah. taking his advice. Okay. So we figured we all use our audience, who, mm-hmm. by the way, there's like 7,000 something people watching, right? Now you, if you didn't know this, you can be educated because he told us to educate you. Yeah. Let's have a look. So yeah. the flag Let's educate China, ourselves here. Officially, the national flag of the People's Republic of China, also known as the five-star red flag, that is what is officially known in China, yes. right? Is Chinese uh, red. It's called Zhongguohong, which means yes. China's red. Yeah, right? but it's the Communist Party's red. Yes. Mm. Um, and uh, with five golden stars uh, charged at the canton. The uh, design features one large star and four uh, smaller, sm- star. smaller stars. So there's basically one star, if you're listening, mm-hmm. to the left, and then there's four stars to the right. They're golden, yeah. right? Do you know where it came from? Well, it was, it's been the national flag of China since the foundation of the People's Republic of China, October 1st, 1949, which, by the way, what, what date was that? Who took over in that date? Well, Mao Zedong and the Communist Party ah, of China. Interesting. So you're saying this flag didn't exist prior to Mao Zedong taking over. This is the, this is the Communist flag. Party's flag. And I mean, it's pretty obvious because the large star symbolizes the Communist Party. Yeah, so this is cool. Um, we can educate all the people that don't understand. Maybe the, maybe the guy holding the flag didn't understand what this flag means because actually what it means is it has some, some really good symbolism here. In fact, we'll pull up uh, the graphic yeah. uh, right here. Yeah. Can we can you, tell uh, you what each one means. So the largest star, what does that mean? Well, it symbolizes the Communist Party. Oh, interesting. Mm. But this flag is not communist, though. It 100% us. is. It literally symbolizes it the Communist dude. Party. He said yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. No, we have to educate ourselves. Oh, okay, I'll educate myself. So mm. maybe the lesser stars will tell me. Okay. Ah, the lesser stars mean the working class, the mm-hmm. peasantry, the petite bourgeoisie, and the national bourgeoisie. That's just communist jargon that you've just read out over there. Well, let, <laughs> it's yeah. literally like yes. a to just distill a book of Marx or something into a flag. There it is. <laughs> well, it's talking me... about bourgeoisie, the peasantry, the what else? The petite bourgeoisie. Did they say lesser... proletariat anywhere in there? <laughs> no, yeah. But uh, uh, a man named Zhang Liansong beat out 2,992 other designers competing to create a flag for the People's Republic of China. Mm -hmm. He based his design off the Chinese proverb, longing for the stars, longing for the moon. The idea to use four small stars came from Mao Zedong's speech on the People's Democratic Dictatorship. (laughs) Uh, So this... Democratic Dictatorship. By the way... What is that? That's an oxymoron. If you ever hear a country that calls itself like a democratic republic, like People's Democratic Republic of of Korea, Korea, then... And you know, if they have to say, no, really, we swear we're, dem- we're democracy, we're not a dictatorship. Yeah, exactly. And you know that's the most dictatorial country. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, it was first hoisted October 1st, uh, 1949 in Tiananmen Square. Mm-hmm. Red symbolizes the revolution. Yes. Communist revolution. Communist and revolution. And the gold pros- is prosperity, the yellow river and heritage. Um, different variations were posed. In fact, there's another design which has a hammer and sickle. Yeah, it actually has a hammer and sickle on these made big star because that is symbolizing the Communist Party. So I'm actually going to go out on a limb and respectfully disagree. Mm-hmm. By the way, the guy that's complaining to the piano guy, right? I will... I'm not... This is not about sides or whatever, but I agree. I understand with not wanting to be filmed in public. I understand sure. something like that. And that's something that I... You know, both of us are... are um, you know, we used to be YouTubers. We used to vlog around, like wherever yeah. we went, and I, and I get that that's kind of cringe and stuff. Like, I get why you might have a problem with that, but what this turned into is so much more than that. Yeah. One thing I will disagree with him with is the meaning of the flag. I mean, this is I'm not not only going to say this is a communist flag. I think this is the most communist flag. It is, yeah, that currently exists right now. Yeah, probably. Yeah. There are probably a couple out there that have hammer and sickles on them. Yeah, but I think this is straight up the meaning of this is the revolution. It's Mao's revolution. Yeah. So look, without a doubt, everybody, if you were on the fence, the Chinese flag is a communist flag because it symbolizes the Communist Party. It represents the Communist Party. It represents the Communist Revolution. It represents the petite bourgeoisie and the peasantry and the working class and all that nonsense. Yes. It is... A communist manif- manifesto in a flag. Yeah. So if you it doesn't look, get more common. If you look at a flag, that flag anywhere in the world, you can say it's a communist flag, and it one hundred percent represents the Communist Party of China, and it represents communist China. So yeah, you know we have a schedule. So yeah, that's, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, we're on we're on a schedule here. Okay, we'll move on from that. Just it's have to such a douchey thing well, to say. Yeah, like we're on a schedule here. Yeah, we're on a. Okay, yeah, you guys. So we cut a lot of the video out, but we just wanted to get to what happened next. Of course, the Chinese entourage went and and ratted to the police. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a better way to say that, but this is something that we've experienced in China ourselves a lot. Oh, yes. You know, it's um, 
it's just one of those things. They want to shut someone down. They want to shut the foreigners down in China. They go to the police. The police come and they, you know, take care of you, try to get you to delete your photos, or, you know, do whatever. And so they use the exact same tactics, but in the UK. Mm. So they went to the police yeah. to try and get the police to come and forcefully uh, delete this is, the pictures. This you know? is pretty disappointing. This is where it gets kind of bad. I, let's let's watch and yeah. see how the, the conversation plays out. Well, listen, Kerry, Kerry, listen, Kerry, listen, we're in a public space. Listen, we've just had a conversation sure. with this student in my case. Listen, please. Kerry, you're recording Listen, we're, we're recording listen this, is, this is going on your YouTube channel. It's, but I need to speak to you without this being on your YouTube channel. Well, what please. about what? Is it proper in a public space? Listen, can I just have a conversation sure. with you, please? Without your friend with you? No, because, for, because the camera never lies. Sorry. Listen, I've got my camera on. Okay, and so we're I've just got my camera on. Let's have a conversation then. This is going on your YouTube channel and I don't want it to go on your YouTube channel. Well, don't channel. talk to me then, Kerry. Listen. Listen. She's at K Kerry, we're in Britain. Right. We're in a public space. We've got a free country. The first of the matter right. is, we're going to making communist comments at the moment. No, state. I said you're waving a communist flag. That's all I said. And the hands were meant to be going towards her? Were you trying to touch her in that I was not trying to touch her. That's why I have a camera. Right. Right, okay. That's why I have a camera. They've requested that the video where they've approached gets deleted and not used on your channel. No, they because don't. Because there's money being made and they work for a company, then their faces can't be shown. Well, they, they shouldn't be. In, in, if that's, you're not their private security agent. I'm not their private security I like that yeah, quote, actually. It's I agree very with good. them on that. You're not their private security. <laughs> now, the thing is, think about this <clears throat> under most circumstances. If you're in the British public there um, and the police come to you and s say, you know, they've requested you delete your, your footage, I think most people would comply. Yeah. You think, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. now it's a, a, you're worried about getting into trouble with the authorities. That's the police true. have approached you. Yeah, because that's not normal, right? No, it's, I think it's horrible how they've gamed the system. Yeah. You know, how they they are pretty much enforcing Chinese censorship yeah. abroad, wherever yeah. they are. You know? Yeah, and that's that's unfortunate, right? Mm. That's really, really, really unfortunate. And also, um, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't tell someone not to post something on YouTube. Imagine a cop walking up to you and be like, "You better not put this on YouTube." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. Don't. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's not how this works. Yeah, this is. It's incredibly worrying, and this is the crux of the matter. Here is okay. We have now seen the communist um, party's censorship in action. Okay, now. Many of the people that appeared in this film have since been linked to the Communist Party of China. Okay, if not part of the Communist Party of China themselves, they have worked with the Communist Party or with the United Front, or with the Confucius Institute. You know, the, there is an unfortunate side to this incident: is yeah. that the so-called human flesh search engine, the Renro, as they call it in China, has gone overboard, and the people, the the Chinese people that are in this clip, have been 100% doxed by. By the Chinese internet, by the way, they've released their ID numbers, where they live, their addresses in China, you know, the things they do. And this usually happens when the Chinese internet as a whole is displeased with a person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we can say now for sure, now that the dust has settled on all of this, is that the support from the Chinese side, the Chinese internet, is actually on the side of the pianist and not it's, on the side of the... It was pretty crazy, and it, it's, yeah. not, it's not confusing to us, but I think it was confusing for a lot of the public because yeah. actually there's a great video, and there's a link down below in the description to uh, Chopsticks and Trains. It's mm -hmm. a, a channel of a guy in China. Yeah, friend of and ours. He, yeah, and he mm -hmm. talks about um, the we, like WeChat response and like all the comments on the Chinese internet about this, and it's it's insane because they're making fun of um, the the Gala people, yeah. the Gala entourage. Yeah, they're making fun of their response, and again, like you said, taking the side of the the pianist. The pianist yeah, which is um, interesting to a lot of people because a lot of people thought, oh, they're going to do the bidding of the CCP, but that's not the case. Like if you watch the video, which a lot of people did in China, you're not going to take the side of the people making a big fuss yeah you're probably going to take the side of the dude that was just jamming out and a lot of these people could have potentially been tourists in london that might have walked into a situation like that and enjoyed his piano play sure. right so they're going to be like that's the more approachable and reasonable side of things yeah. if you just look at it from the outside yeah it's incredibly important that things like this happen um sorry and the reason i say that is i think a huge portion of people would have capitulated and deleted yeah. the footage or stopped or whatever and yeah. so I'm sorry because not only were they threatened with legal action mm. and shouted at yeah. for 
you know, touching a flag, so verbally assaulted. Uh, they had the police called on them, and the police came to like basically tell them they've got allegations against them and that they should delete this. If you didn't have a confident live stream, because it takes, by the way, guys, it takes a lot of confidence to live stream in public. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you have to have that kind of uh, devil may care attitude. Especially to do this. like with a performance. Yeah. Right? Uh, anyone who's ever suffered stage fright or had to stand up on a stage, you know it's difficult, right? Yeah. Public so speaking. You, you need to have someone who's got the balls to stand up in public and do this kind of thing. And so if it wasn't for somebody like Mr. Kavanaugh, who actually did stand up for himself and actually not just capitulate and delete his stuff, this would have been silent and the Chinese censorship would have worked. Mm. And it's spreading. It's spreading everywhere. The way the Chinese government has managed to twist narratives around the world to say it's racist to um, d discriminate against the Communist Party of China. It's racist to criticize yeah, the, the Communist stuff. Party of China. We saw that during the COVID outbreak. If you said COVID comes from China, you're suddenly racist. Yeah. Or you say the Chinese government's covering up COVID, you're racist. Mm. And they realized it worked very well yeah. because it did shut down a lot of conversation. It did. It, did. it did stop a lot of people from criticizing the the very poor handling of the COVID outbreak, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. right, so that's why I'm saying it's important that this worked out and it's important for us to see how far it went with the police as well. Yeah. Because... Like I said, put yourself in that situation. If you were filming a tourist video, you were there, or you were filming yourself and your friends in public, and you were asked to stop because a, a group of Chinese people all wearing, waving Chinese flags told you to stop, and then they called the police on you, would you have deleted your footage? And I think you probably would have. Yeah, I think you know? most people would, yeah. Anyway, let's continue on with it. We'll just finish this conversation. And we're in a free country. We're in a free space. We're not causing the trouble. The problem is not from us, Kerry. The problem is they are coming over, telling us what to do, and playing the piano. Now, fair is fair, but you are not their private security guards. I never said and that like, was, and I'm so, having a conversation with you. And we're in a free space, in a free country. I'm not causing any trouble. There's an allegation being made, and that's why I'm What's the allegation? Here. Now, you told me to stop filming, and now you say there's an allegation. The there's camera never lies. The allegation that's why I film. You've told me to turn off my camera, and now you're saying I've got the an allegation. Camera, What's the, the allegation? Reason why, the reason why I'm asking you not to film it is because I know that you are putting this on your YouTube. Doesn't matter where it goes, we're in a free country. Sorry. We're in a democracy. We're not in China. And that's not racist, that's the truth. That's what our exactly, forefathers thought. Exactly, for. but you can't say things like that either. You can't just say things like that. Say what? Like that. that we're in a free country? No, that we're not in China. We've well, got... Yeah, why can't you say we're not in China? You just can't. That was her knee jerk reaction to this. Because she's probably, you know, been told by them that this is way bigger deal than it is. And yeah. she's like, I better shut this down. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy to say, to think that saying we're not in China is seen as a, some kind of discriminatory racist thing. I think, in my personal opinion, I think mm. she just doesn't like YouTube. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> you know? Yeah. She's more of a Billy Billy fan. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's finish this up. Well, they came. Listen, Kerry, if I was over in China and I started laying the law down to Chinese people at the piano, telling them what they cannot, cannot do. Do you think that's appropriate? They came over here, the guy started shouting at me, and he said, you're not allowed to film, you're not allowed. And I said, sorry, we're in Britain, I'm allowed to play. And I said, you're waving a communist flag. And then he said, you're racist. So if I've done anything wrong, tell me. We're in a free, we're, this is a free speech issue, I'm sorry. This is a free speech issue. We are, I'm not causing any trouble. They are the ones making a fuss. And they shouldn't get the police as their private security. I think it's I a disgrace. Nobody said that, have they? Who said that? And on top of that, Kerry, you told me to stop filming and then you said there's an allegation. Now, if I didn't have my camera, how would I prove my innocence? You know what? I know they are causing the fuss. I am not causing the fuss. I'm just standing up for myself, right? The fuss being caused and I've come up to deal with it. Oh, no, listen, Kerry. Listen, you can't say that. They don't, what, they're from China? They're from China, but you can't say they've, they, they've got you a can't communist... Say from well, China. well, can I just say they're from China? Without the F. I saw, sorry exactly, for the F. Exactly, but you know but exactly got, what you Listen, they are waving a communist flag, and I said you're waving a communist flag. Is that racist? To say they've got a communist flag? It's very close, isn't it? Look. 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 I've got nothing yet. Listen, I'm just playing at the piano. They no, stood by the piano. I was filming and then they started laying down the door. I'm not doing anything. 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 I'
I'm not telling them anything that you're telling me to tell them. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Get on, play your piano. I'll have a discussion with right. them. Tell them we're in a free car. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how um, she said she's not going to tell them anything you're telling me, but then she did tell him everything they told her. Does that make sense? Yes. It's kind of pathetic. Anyway, I'm let's great. move on. There we go. We're in a freak of Is anyone watching this? Do you see, we've got the communists here telling me not to do. I'm just going to play some boogie woogie. <laughs> okay, so now, listen guys, we are a fair show, so we have to show all sides of this. We can't just side with one side, just because we perhaps might like one side more than the other, you know. So we have to tell you the backlash and we have to say, well, show you the pushback from, you know, the people that were in the video. So fair? Fair, absolutely. Fair? All right. So just to catch you up to speed here quickly, he was live streaming his piano. There was a Chinese entourage uh, in the background. They were going to film for the New Year Gala, the Chinese New Year Gala. Uh, that's what they've said anyway. And um, they didn't want to be filmed. This is another thing that I find is kind of interesting. They had non-disclosure agreements, apparently. Mm. That's why they didn't want to be filmed, because no one's supposed to know that they're filming. Right. It's a bit suspect, wouldn't you say? I suppose, yeah. Do you think it's because they were going to pretend that they were live during the Chinese New Year Gala? I think it's more of like the gala is such a big deal in China that if any like leak got out that this is what potentially they're going to do, it kind of ruins like the whole mystique of the whole thing. It's supposed to be a big budget thing. You're not supposed to know anything ahead of time. Like you said, it mm. is a live event. So maybe it's supposed to look live, you know? Yeah. There's, I, I, there's a lot yeah. to it. I speculate. I speculate. This is my own personal speculation that they were probably going to do a segment with, yeah. where they would say like Happy New Year from London and playing like a, a tune at the piano. Yeah. Um, Happy New Year, everyone back home from, sure. from London type thing. And because the Chinese government is so paranoid about anything beyond their control, they were going to pre-record it, you know, just in case someone like walked past with a free Hong Kong flag yeah. or something, yeah. right? Or a free Tibet right. or something. I have a feeling that they just had to pre-record it so that they could play it and pretend it's live. I, I think they would have done that anyway, even without the threat of the flags or the protest mm -hmm. stuff, just because it's just what you do, right? Like there's so many variables that would that potentially yeah, beyond their control. that up, right? <clears throat> anyway, anyway, yeah, that's, that's my speculation as to why they didn't sure. want to be filmed. So here's the pushback. Here's the lady who actually initially approached uh, Mr. Kavanaugh with the um, request for him to delete their footage. All right, she was part of that group. And this is what she put out. So it's only fair that we go through her response. Okay. <laughs> 我想在我的立场上给大家讲一下当天到底发生了些什么 Okay, so quick recap. Um, she's, she didn't realize it would get this big and she's been getting a lot of uh, hate messages and yeah. stuff, which always happens with these kind of events, which is an unfortunate side of the internet. But hey, you know, that's how it goes. We deal with it as well all the time. Um, she said that they were there to film some Chinese New Year greetings. Okay. I like how she says, for a company for free. That's not true. That's well, I mean, maybe they... You know, the compensation was in some other form or, you know, like there's a lot of things there's, you could say. She literally shared her planning, the planning document about how mm. that, I don't know why she would share this, by the way. She's like blanks, I guess, to prove that, hey, this is, we we're supposed like to do this. Though, yeah. But if you, if you'd like to like take a screenshot of that, guys, and translate it, you can see that actually something interesting in that document, it, it kind of mentions filming permission and maybe go to plan B or pan B, as they say, and shoot with uh Cell phones, phone, yeah. probably not to arouse suspicion and have to ask for filming permissions or something like that. Um, but that's probably something worth analyzing a little bit more. Yeah, we, I don't know what that means, mm. but it's weird that it does say plan B, shoot with a phone. Yeah. You know, film uh, with a phone. Yeah, film with Enough a phone. Sync, not shoot, shoot yeah. Because Guys, <laughs> again, here's, here's one thing that I find incredibly like ridiculous is that they have the audacity to try and mm. stop a British live streamer from doing sure. his live streams and claiming that he does it for profit. This yeah. is this is one of their big rebuttals is he does it for profit and therefore he can't use our images. Mm. Okay, because he's making mm -hmm. money from it. Right, right, right. That's right. their whole thing. Because he's got a YouTube channel. Okay. However, 
they're filming for the New Year Gala, which is the biggest TV show, most viewed TV show in the world. It's going to have 1.3 billion viewers. So whatever yeah. you're filming out there, it's a hell of a lot bigger. It's on much greater scale mm. than whatever some little YouTuber's doing. Yeah, it's even pretty if, weak. Even weak if he argument. does have a large audience, because he does. He's got, it's a stupid argument. I mean, you know, and again, filming for a Chinese company for free. Yeah, but if it's the New Year Gala, you're actually filming for the government. So this is a government initiative. And I don't know, but in my mind, I feel like if a government is going to film propaganda in another country, because the Chinese New Year Gala it's is propaganda. propaganda. Yes. If you're going to film propaganda and you're going to use uh, another country's space to film your propaganda piece, surely mm. you need some kind of permission. I would think you'd need permission. I'm assuming, and that we don't know, but I'm assuming in that public space, if you were to film for a for-profit foreign government on commercial TV that has money exchanging hands, then probably you'd need permission. I'm just thinking, At least with certain cameras. I know? mean, okay, we're talking about uh, the Chinese state media. So what if BBC wanted to go and film a piece in Tiananmen Square in front of the Mao Zedong yeah. portrait, for instance? Yeah. They wanted to film something about um, the British, I don't know, Whatever. getting tea from China or something, yeah. okay? For a big thing about like the history of tea or something. Surely they have to get permission from the Chinese government Absolutely. We know to go that. and film we that. We filmed in uh, documentaries in China. Yeah. And it was a struggle. We got mm. booted out of places and chased us around and we were doing an amateur, completely small scale little trip basically. Yeah. And they were hounding us. So if the Chinese government is going to be filming something in public in Britain... You know, I, I I just feel like they probably because this is a government thing. Yeah. Probably should have permission. Right. Anyway, let's uh let's see see what she goes on about here. It's all very clandestine, isn't it? It's going on about how um, they're not supposed to disclose that they're filming. No one's supposed to know. We can't. I couldn't even tell my team what we filmed. All this kind of stuff. It's very, very weird. It's very sort of spycrafty, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit strange. I mean, it sounds weird. Yeah, it is. Anyway, so while they're waiting, Okay, now here's a here's here's a, a point that's been pushed around is um they saying he's racist because they were call well he was calling them Japanese. Okay, mm -hmm. but apparently now he released a video himself. There was also a Japanese group over there that were, you know, interacting with them as well. So there was actually a Japanese group. Like there was like a film crew. Yeah, there, a Japanese, Japanese film, film crew. crew. Yeah. So they'd interacted with them prior. So they thought they were also Japanese. You know, hey, look, not all uh, foreigners could tell the difference between Chinese people and Japanese people at a glance. Okay. Right. That, yeah, that's and an argument. They don't understand the languages. They can't tell the languages apart. You know. What if this is completely made up on both sides and it's all staged to promote St. Pancreas Station. That's very possible. <laughs> it's entirely possible. Yeah. Anyway, so they're claiming that he was calling them Japanese. Although he didn't. He called them Chinese. Sure. You know, He made a mistake a few times to call them Japanese, gotcha. but it wasn't intentional from what I can see. Sure. There's a load of Japanese people here doing... Can you see them? There's all sorts of stuff. We've got a Japanese TV crew in the station. Hello, can you dance? Can you do a dance? dance. Let's get this girl to dance. Yeah, can you dance? Whatever. I think the British girls are more fun. That's okay. kind of a douchey thing to <laughs> say. Yeah. Like that's pretty yeah. douchey. And also, like yeah. pr maybe don't bug people by yeah. asking them to dance. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Well, if you watch the interaction before, they were sure. kind of doing a gotcha. thing together anyway. So I think it's just a, and that's part of you know the the whole YouTuber live streaming thing. You got to make your live streams interesting. No, I get so it. You it's involve just... you involve the public. I didn't and... say it's illegal, but it's yeah. a little douchey. Of course, it's yeah. douchey. Now here's. Here's the one part of this that might actually be racist. Yeah. Might. Okay. Um, he sat down and he played this song. Okay. Now, guys, this song has been used as a meme. Yeah. For the social credit score and things like that. It's that whole sphere, right? It's called uh, Ching Chung Hanji. Now, it's actually a, a Chinese opera. Yes. Okay. So we'll show you what he played.
So they're making a big uh, scene out of this being a racist song and he was doing this to provoke them, right? So that's, that's, the song. that's the original song. R.I.P. your ears, by the way. Sorry about that. This is Chinese opera, though. You have to have tolerance for high-pitched noises yes. if you watch that. Okay. The so, thing is, here's the deal. Mm. It's wrong that mm. it's a discriminatory song. It is a Chinese opera. However. What What do you mean? It's it's not a discriminatory it, song. No, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a Chinese it's opera. It's wrong of her to say that. Mm. But that's also like one of those things where you're you're being the annoying kid that's like, there's no other implications. No, oh, it's actually fine. Because, yeah, sure, you know what I mean? Because sure, sure. in reality, it is a, it's a meme put over a Tom and Jerry clip. Yeah, we'll show you. What's, what's happened is this is an actual Chinese opera song. Yes. Then there's a clip of an old man singing it, which is then being like sampled and put into this kind of racist meme. It is a racist yeah. meme, which we'll show you in a second. Of, you That's know, the one that goes around the internet. Yeah. So that's shown whenever these like social credit score meme or whatever, comes out, yeah. you know, something to do with that. <laughs> so this is the one part that might actually be him being the a social, little bit of a douche. You the know social credit score memes are not racist inherently. They're no. they're a parody of the Chinese government's overreach. Mm. Yes. But this particular one is just totally out of context. Yeah. And it's obviously from a racist segment of Tom and Jerry. Yeah. And they put a remix of that opera song over that. So... Technically, you could pull the whole, no, that's a Chinese opera. What are you talking about? Yeah, but, exactly. you know, the implication is probably not. That's yeah. probably this, right? It's probably what the internet knows. They don't know the original opera, right? Yeah. So let's be honest. I mean, that's one of those things is probably kind of uh, in poor taste. Yeah. That Now, I think him playing that song, especially if he had knowledge of it being a yeah, meme, yeah. is in poor taste. Yeah. yeah. However, they didn't know that. Yeah, I think that probably came in post. Yeah, what right, I'm like saying, afterwards. what I'm saying is that actually had nothing to do with the incident. No, 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 for sure. Because the people that were involved in the incident had no idea that that was a meme song. Right. Well, As, at least we can tell from the dialogue, which which came out later. Because otherwise, you, probably would have been brought up in the beginning. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, this, why are you playing that song? Type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it, because you know the the lady her name's uh, Meng Ying. She sent a tweet to Byron Wan, who's a, a dissident on YouTube, uh, Twitter. Sorry. Okay. Um, which, you know, she also posted on her Twitter account claiming that the Chinese group was provoked by um, Brendan Kavanaugh. One note, Liu mentioned Brendan played the Ching Cheng Hanji. Uh, some say it signifies racism, while some don't think so. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, she wasn't aware of it until the video had been posted and gone viral and someone else brought it up. So that song, whatever it means didn't have anything to do with the group's actions that day. Yeah, I think that's the important thing to know is that that song has nothing to do with what the piano incident, ha yes. like what happened, because yes. their whole interaction between those people wasn't about that, Yeah, right? So that's important. That's that's what I'm trying to say here, is that yeah. even, if, even if he did purposefully play that song in poor taste, mm -hmm. they didn't pick up on it, and it didn't have anything to do with things escalating sure. to what they did, sure. okay? So, you know, here's here's her tweet. If you want to, I'm not going to read it out. If you guys want to take a screenshot or something and read it out, you can you can read it out. But that was her response to um, the Byron one. Uh, yeah. Actually, you know, uh, that's her, the one that's uh, talking in this video. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, the racist <laughs> song out of the way. Um, now, here's an important thing. He also said our national flag is a communist flag. The word is somewhat controversial. It is not. How is it controversial? It's a communist flag. Also, just because it's a national flag, you mean literally, it's not a communist flag. you literally sing to the Gong Chandan every day. You call it the, the Communist Party of China. In yeah, in the, the CPC. Anthem, yeah. If it was, if it was a controversial word. Why do you say it every day? Why do you say it all the time? Why is the government of your country called the communist? Is it a controversial? No, no, it's a positive thing in China. It's, I'm just it's saying it's, to be. it's not a controversial word. Yeah. Communist in communism is not. It's a factual word. It's a, yeah. That's not like a, it's yeah. It's not a slur. It's not a slur. No. You know, it is. It is a system of government that sucks 
Yeah, and I mean, it's not even it a... Sucks imper- donkey China bowls. Do- China doesn't even practice communism in practice, yeah. but it is the Communist Party of China. It's an authoritarian government, and the Communist Party rules the country, yes. and it is the meaning of the Chinese flag. Yeah, so, so it's I mean, not a controversial word. It's just a word that describes something that sure. sucks. That's just, that's out of the way. Like yeah. We, you know. yeah, I mean, in my own personal I mean, opinion. we're on a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the way, there's people in the chat that took yeah. me seriously when I said that. If you're tuning in late, in the beginning, <laughs> one of the guys said, we're on a schedule. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm the guy. this. Yeah. I'm right. not on a schedule. We're yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And that word is not polite. How is the word communist not polite? I guess it's not a nice word. Yeah. But it's not like it's a it's not a controversial word. It's a factual word. You were waving a communist flag. Sure. You are supporting the Communist Party of China to make a New Year Gala video for the government. Mm. You know, at the end of the anyway, day. Anyway, let's get to some of the meat here. Okay. Okay. Uh, she says he didn't understand. He thought he didn't understand. We're in a free country. Now, she said the police stopped him for being racist. You see how this, by the way, this clip that she put out was released on the Chinese internet to Weibo. Mm. And this often happens if there's some kind of international dispute like this. In order to garner support, release a, they go ahead and release a clip in China to say, oh, these foreigners were like just being you know, discriminatory and bad. And they get a huge rallying. And mm. I think the idea was to try and get the Wu Mao and all the, you know, the 50 cent army to back them up and come and attack and get videos taken down and all that kind of thing, which they did try, by the way. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, she put out there that the police stopped him for being racist, which is not true. That's not what happened. Okay. Then the YouTuber started playing and keep us waiting for over 40 minutes. Now, the problem with that is that it's been live streamed and he didn't play for over 40 minutes. He played for about nine minutes, something like that. You can watch the live stream for yourself. Yeah. So she only realized after they left that he has a YouTuber with two million followers. Right. Which is probably a bit of an uh oh moment for her, to be honest. Sure. Sure.我的小伙伴就让我去礼貌性的问一下，啊，到底他还要用多久？但是并不是说叫停他的使用，我是在他一首曲子结束后才问他的，并不是向他说的，中途扰乱他的音乐，Chinese yeah, so she's just explaining, you know, that uh, when she realized that, you know, he was filming, that she went to go and ask him to delete because she saw, oh, he must be a content creator. Right. Right. 说一些让我真的就当时不知道我该去说什么，而我的小伙伴们他们看到这个情况，有就一个女同学跟一个男同学，他们就过来，就问他到底是什么情况，他在沟通的过程当中也是试图去拿我们另外一个女同。So now she's saying that he tried to pull the flag from their hands, which isn't true, all right? But this is quite important. The flag thing is very important, everyone, because this is an attitude that I think a lot of people don't realize um, is going on, and I think she explains it very well. And this is an attitude that we all need to be aware of. So... Outside of China, we need to respect our flag. Okay, show respect for our flag. As overseas Chinese, use it reasonably and with dignity. Don't throw away the flag, right? Don't litter the flag, as she says. Don't, do not damage the flag. If you see someone who damages the flag, we have to take the initiative to stop it. Okay. Use your actions to protect the flag. Okay. Okay, I have, yeah, I have, that's good. It's good advice. Because uh, during the Hong Kong protests, when people were um, shipped over to, across the border into Hong Kong to stand up for the CCP, 
they handed out to mainlanders lots of flags and be like, no, bad Hong Kong. We are proud of Beijing. We yes. love, you know, the China, Communist Party of China. And then those protesters threw out all of the flags. Yeah, when they were done after they were paid. Threw them on the ground, threw yeah. them in the garbage. Here's proof. So there's the, uh, I'm just saying, maybe use some of that attitude to, you know, tell those people to stop and protect your flag to people of China that have been littering their flags, yeah. you know? Now, I'm a little bit concerned about this. I understand to be patriotic and to love your country and all of that stuff is a thing. And I, sure. You know, it's, it's totally okay if that's the way you are. Yeah. Um, but to protect your flag, the way that she phrased it is something that, I've, that has worried me for a long time about Chinese nationalism is it seems as if protecting the flag supersedes law. Yeah, I actually did a whole video on it. We've covered this multiple times. It's called Passport Douche, we yes. call him. Um, but he basically goes around and does these like propaganda films in foreign countries. So he'll go to Cuba mm. and like he'll get rushed by a bunch of thugs, like yeah. local people, who, which yeah. is a little racist. Yeah, 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 exactly. And they like pretend to beat him up and he's like, no. And he's like protecting the Chinese flag. He's yeah. always has the Chinese flag and his Chinese passport. Yeah, right and he there. like whips out the passport and, and then back down. Like, and they're like, oh no. And they run away. But we've covered that to death. But yeah. the point is like, it's so part of like real life lore in China that it's it's really like what she's saying is not weird to yes. Chinese people because it's what they hear all the time. But to protect the flag with your actions. So... I mean, here's the thing. In, I I don't like it when people go and burn a flag. No, okay. I think it's kind of. I think it sucks. It doesn't. Yeah. I, you see people burn the American flag. No, all I would the time. never burn a Chinese flag. No, me neither. No. You see people stomping on flags. You see all this, which, you know, hey, it's a douchey thing to do. Yeah. Okay, because you don't know some some people out there are very proud of their flag. You know, mm. they're proud of their country, and so you know, let them. A have, lot of the pe the yeah. British people in the chat who are proud of their country keep getting mad because we call it Saint Pancreas. But you know what? <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. my right. Exactly. I won't burn your flag. <laughs> yeah. But okay. But the thing is, the way that she what she said there is something that I've seen repeated yeah. over and over again. That you know, you have to protect the flag, the Chinese flag, no matter what. Yeah. So if somebody is at a protest, like I don't know, stomping on the flag or doing something bad with the Chinese flag or scribbling on it or something, what if they just rush up? And we've seen it in these these protests. Sometimes they attack people with metal poles, and yes. you know they might stab people. You never know what they might do, and that's not a good precedent. It's not yeah. good to know that there's this attitude out there, you know, yeah. that sort of supersedes everything else, that you must protect the Chinese flag, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we all know that that's just, you know, what do you call it, lip service, because yeah, in, cause in real this. life... Also seen it in protests with uh, pro-CCP protesters. They get bust into these events. They're not even... They don't care. They get free lunch out of it. They get paid a certain amount of money. A uh, friend of the channel, Lola Farley, saw some of this. Right? Yeah, and he asked him, where do I get the lunch? Where do, do I, I get, get the free, free lunch? lunch? Yeah, where do I get, when do we get paid? You know, they go, they have these protests and they, they just toss the flags afterwards. Yeah, right? because or it's just it's nonsense. like whatever, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so we're, we're showing, the reason we're showing the re response and her response in full is we, we want to be fair and we yeah. want to have the other side sure. have their say too, right? We're the China show here. We don't want to be too biased about things, you know? So anyway, when she just continues. That part was cut out of context, but it's not cut out of context, guys, because it's was a live, it a live stream. stream. It's the full <laughs> it's thing. The thing. You can there. go watch the full thing. Now, um, you know, the beauty of this mm -hmm. is we finally get to use... Where is it? It's here somewhere. We get to use this. But can you see? <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> finally, it's. Finally. Oh, I pressed. Sorry, I pressed the wrong one there. Um, the Streisand effect, guys. Yeah. Now they tried to first of all get him to delete the footage. Sure. Then they sent like a privacy complaint, copyright takedown thing to his, you know, whatever. And the beauty of this, this whole thing, is that it hasn't gone down. No. And them trying to take it down has actually driven far more traffic to this video, which now has eight and a half million views. Yeah, it's only going up. Yeah. They've multi they've had multiple uh, attempts to take it down, by the way. Yeah. And this is something the Chinese uh, war mail, the 50 cent army does, is they will falsely claim copyright. They will falsely claim, you know, whatever, infringing this and that. They do it to our videos all the time. They flag our videos as child porn and whatever else just to try and get them taken down. Mm. 
Okay, it usually fails, but the cases sometimes come up. Yeah, yeah, the the one that used to succeed a lot was like showing violent video game footage for some reason. Yeah, and we don't even have video games yeah. in the videos. Yeah, our they, video they literally like, flag every single. They tick every single box. Yeah, then our video would be age restricted or demonetized, yeah. saying for showing violent it video game. It doesn't footage. work so much. No, anymore, not anymore. But, but it used to work. Anyway, so the the beauty of this whole thing is that by trying to censor using the Chinese censorship methods, has actually backfired. Yeah. And now everybody's seen them in action, which yeah. is kind of crazy. See, she said he only showed the side that he edited himself. But it's not an edited video. It's a non-stop live stream. Yeah, there's some weird stuff in the... Um... In the chat, it's interesting. They're like, oh, the the video is gone. No, it's not. It's not gone. No, I go, just look. You can go it's, find it's it. It's an interesting thing that's being tried for some reason. Yeah, yeah. It's you not can, gone. You can go to his channel. It's still there. Uh, okay, let's take a look. Okay. You're talking about yourself there. Now, here's here's a funny thing that I find being used a lot is they try to use character assassination in order to somehow hide their own actions, right? Mm. This is something that I've had to deal with a lot of my channel as well, is I'd release a, a topic, any old topic that I release, and people will say, I'm racist, therefore my topic is null and void. Right. I want to ask you this, guys. And because there, there's a lot of accusations of racism when it comes to this video. Mm -hmm. Let's just say, and of course, hypothetical, let's just say this guy is a massive racist. Right. Does it change the fact that the Chinese group tried to get him to take the video down and censor their presence? No. If a racist bites into a lemon and says, mm, this lemon is sour, is the lemon suddenly sweet just because he's a racist? No. Does the lemon not exist? No. You know what I'm saying? By calling someone a racist or by calling him a bad character or a troublemaker or something doesn't change the facts of the situation. This situation happened. It was filmed and it was live streamed. So I'd like to kind of get that out of the way because it seems like the only real rebuttal we're getting here is that this guy sucks. Therefore, ignore this whole situation. Right. You know? Right. Please, guys. When people start throwing around the racism word because they don't have an argument to actually counter what really happened... You can start to disregard them because they obviously don't have any logical standing. Make sense? Yeah. Now let's see what else she has to say. Now the thing is, she's trying to trying to get it taken down because oh, it's being used for commercial purposes. What are they doing? You know, it's for their business. They're working for a company. Even if it's for free, you're working for a company. You're going there Still filming something. Right? You're filming for a company, right? right? Is that not commercial? I think it's just trying anything. To, yeah, it's, you know. it's one of those click all the boxes. Oh, That's say right. there's violent video game footage. Yep. See if you can take it down, you right. know? So again, they're, they're doing it for a company. They're actually doing it for a foreign government. Yeah which is supersedes a company. Yeah. They're doing it for a 1.4 billion or 1.3 billion viewership on the New Year Gala. Yeah. They're doing it for something way bigger. But then they're trying to use the law to get a YouTube live streamer taken down. It's true. You know what I mean? It's absolute nonsense. <laughs> I guess she tried to add, add it at the change, end. Change it. She's like, oh, let's be filled with love. And oh, I just wanted to share my side of the story. Yeah, we need to move this. We're on a schedule here. And the chat's we... getting very, very sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a long time on that. Okay, I know we did. But guys, again, please, this this is the China show. All right? This is not the, um, the biased show. We have to show both sides. Crap, I thought it was called the bias show. <laughs> fair, fair and square. Now, of course, uh, we have to cap this off by saying that there's been a lot of revelations about family members and stuff. And we don't want to go into that because we're actually against that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, these people behaved in a poor manner. Mm -hmm. All right. 
their own actions reflect their own individual choices. Just because their family members are criminals or they themselves have lawsuits against them for doing image rights stuff, um, it, it doesn't reflect on who they are and the, ref, the actual actions that they, mm. they did. So, you know, we want to focus on that. Mm -hmm. The main takeaway from all of this is we've seen Chinese censorship in action abroad, at least the attempt. Yeah. And they're continually trying to get the video taken down as well. Yeah. So if you go to uh, Mr. Kavanaugh's channel. YouTube he, did not take it down, guys. He explains it, okay? <laughs> it's just the chat's like, it's gone. It's you can, not gone. Um, you can just go. It's the live section. Yeah, go. you got to click on the live section. You'll find it there. It's there, guys. It's just like when people go to our channel and say, where's all the content? You have to click the little live tab. It's not on the main part. Uh, my favorite part of this entire thing was the th hundreds, if not thousands of comments making up different Saint body parts. We had Saint <laughs> lymph node, yeah. Saint Achilles tendon, yeah. <laughs> Saint wind oh, Dude, <laughs> yeah, Saint wind pipe. Are you, I got I've, I gotta tell you, the UK has some very strange names, mate. Very, very strange names. Yes. There's literally a ticklecock bridge. I know, and I can't say that. I almost said it. I almost said grope something lane. Yeah, grope something. Look up grope something lane. <laughs> Dude, there's some interesting names. Uh, you know, uh, and let's not even get into you know Cockney rhyming <laughs> slang. <laughs> how is St. Pancreas reimagined to pancreas? It's one letter off. Yeah. What do you mean how? There's yeah. so many British people in here that are so mad at St. Pancreas. Yeah. It sounds, it looks like St. Pancreas. Guys. Yeah, exactly. And this yeah. turned out to be the most unintentional promotion of St. Pancreas ever. Anyway, yeah. my takeaway from the whole thing is I think this is dumb as hell. This is my personal mm -hmm. opinion. I think this is blown way out of proportion. I think the response could have mitigated this entire thing. I think it could have been a mild response, could have been done in private afterwards, maybe asked politely and that would, that would be it, right? Um, and then taken elsewhere after that. But to do it all live and to blow it up and get the police involved and call people broadcast racist. it, use the, uh, the racist word. Yeah. All these allegations going out there, I mean, you've really stacked you know, the most of the public in the world against you, including Chinese people on yeah. the internet. Uh, so I think this could have been dealt with in a way better way. And by and large, this incident is dumb as hell to begin with. It's a dude playing the piano at St. Pancreas. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like yeah. that's all there is to it. And this turned into something that a lot of people are making a big deal out of. And it didn't have to be like this. Yeah. But I, I'm going to say I'm very happy that people are making a big deal. Out yeah, of it, yeah. You know, because it does shine. Guys, it shines a spotlight on something that we're very aware of because we've been dealing with it ourselves with, you know, for years now. For sure. They constantly try to shut us yeah. down. Yeah. They've been successful in some yeah. ways, just shutting some of the things we do down yeah. and demonetizing at us least, and doing At least things. a few years ago, a couple yeah. years ago. And yeah. And never mind while we were in China. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, this is very important for the whole world to see because yeah. we shouldn't be tolerating this kind of thing abroad. Yes. We shouldn't have Chinese government uh, methods being employed abroad. I'm sorry. So many people are mad at the St. Pancras thing. They're like, that's something little boys get over when they're adolescents. <laughs> like, we, yeah. don't, we stop saying that when we're young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. King's Cross. Isn't that the place where the Harry Potter thingy is? I think so, yeah. I think that's, um, yeah. Anyway, we've this has been beaten to yeah. death. That's All right. Anyway, let's move on. So uh, we hope we've uh, given you a more rounded idea of what happened there. And we hope we've given you some perspective. And I would like everybody, please, to just focus on the, the fact that the largest, most viewed television show in the world is what they were filming. Yeah. Okay. So that dwarfs the live streaming piano thing. Yes. Massively. Yes. Anyway, it's time for us to move on. So let's move on. That was actually a what's new and yeah. a soft power yeah. hour in one. So what are we moving on to next? Wumar Corner? No. Yes. Right. Wumar Corner. All right, guys. So let's hit Wumar Corner. This is where we uh, talk about Wumar. <laughs> the haters and what they're up to. Yes. Uh, so first of all, uh, in Wumau Corner, we have a segment, a very quick one. Remember we brought up the Houthis thing? Yeah. Uh, in Yemen? Mm -hmm. Basically, there's a situation where these this group, which apparently is going to be designated as a terrorist group by the U.S., but anyway, this group has been stopping shipping container ships. Yep. Um, in in a very important shipping uh, area of the world where everything has to go through. So it's going to be <laughs> of Dan Dong. So you, you, yes. you're saying it's not shipping hub, <laughs> Northeast China. The Red Sea. So no, it's not <laughs> yeah. port of Dandong. Okay. Anyway, long story short, mm -hmm. um, there's, they've, they've been allowing Chinese ships to go through there. And people are like, wait a minute, what the hell? So they're yeah. like basically stopping everyone except China. What's going on here? Turns out Iran is behind a lot of these Houthis, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it's this huge, huge international situation. It's really, really bad. But so what's happening now is people, including uh, U.S. officials, are asking China for help to be like, can you tell them to stop doing this? Right. Because that kind of is is clever. Because if they're the one orchestrating all of this stuff and then all the international pressure is like, can you tell them to stop? And they don't. Yes. It kind of makes things a little easier to figure out what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is like a huge, huge issue. And we want to shout out a friend of the show, uh, Jordan Harbinger. He had an episode about the Houthis in Yemen. I hope you put a terrible right, on, thumbnail on, of him. I didn't because the thumbnail is the newspaper. Oh, man. Yes, your job. You're the one that always does I, that. You were doing this part of the show. Yeah, but I don't make those ridiculous... Don't make me you're break promises. You're the Photoshop guy. Yeah, but like I told you, next time we're going to show him, we're going to show oh. like a... Jordan, fix the thumbnails. Anyway, there's a long-standing joke. Can you pause it? <laughs> I'll pause there's it a long-standing right joke um, with Jordan. <laughs> his, his podcast has some of the best artwork uh, ever. Excellent. And then his YouTube channel has some of the worst thumbnails you've ever seen in your life that make the guests look absolutely terrible. Yeah, they, on, us. they you know, on purpose find like the worst <laughs> screen grab, of and everyone. then they like stretch it out yeah, or something like and add it, like, fat filters and yeah. you know paste, maybe that's just what we, everyone looks filters. like. No, seriously, his his YouTube channel the thumbnail sucks so bad and so insulting to the guests. So the whole idea is I wanted to get him back. Right, which you've done a couple times. Once. Yeah. Oh, once. Okay. It's Do it next happen time. Again. Do yeah. It. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> The important thing is that he did an out of the loop episode with a fantastic, fantastic guest, um, mm. Ryan. And he has talked about the misinformation from uh, Russia before. Mm. He's talked about misinformation from China. He's fantastic. He's a great guest. And it really caught me up on the whole Houthis thing. Yeah. And it does put like a massive perspective on the whole thing because it's actually way bigger than is being led on. It right. involves China. It involves international trade. It involves the entire, that entire area of the world, but not right. from just from like a Middle East perspective, from the perspective mm -hmm. of how does everyone get their stuff. Yeah. So it's really important. So go check it out, jordanharbinger.com slash 934. And then subscribe to his YouTube channel at Jordan Harbinger Show and tell, them, uh, tell him that The China Show sent to you. Yeah, he's a fantastic host. He does a very good show. So... We can definitely 100% recommend him. Just can't recommend his thumbnails. And when, Yes. And when you're <laughs> over there, uh, watch the episodes about us. Yeah. Because we were on a show multiple yeah. times. Yeah. It's very good. It's always good to, to appear on yes. a show. Um, anyway, you get the idea. You could you could have like at least done something with this footage. I didn't have time. We're this. Look how much stuff we have to cover. All right. Okay. Fine. It's priorities, dude. Yeah. True. True. You could do a whole segment about blowing up his nose or his <laughs> eyes or his Next chin. time, you better let me know. I'll Make take him care of it. Make him have chipmunk cheeks I'll or take fish care eyes. Of it. I'll take care of it. All right. <laughs> it's going to happen. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Is this still Wumao Corner? This is this absolutely Wumao Corner. Okay. All right. We're talking about, look, read the headline. China's defense ministry rips NATO and says it's like a walking war machine. So this is all over the Chinese internet. So why do they always do this? They, they do They're this. They're always doing this. They do this. Like, it's that thing any it's, questions? It's that thing, thing at school. It's like, oh, if you point at someone, there's one finger pointing and what, three fingers pointing, pointing back, back at you. Yeah. So maybe and they're like, like no, that. you, you know? <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, long story short. Sure. Long story short, we have the uh, Chinese defense ministry. And this clip went viral in China. And everyone was applauding because, well, most people were applauding because this is China too. showing their um, their mm -hmm. their presence on the world stage in, in yes. terms of a military power. They've been told their whole life that China is you know, behind everyone and they can never stand up for themselves. But now China is actually able to face the West, face the U.S. and NATO, mm -hmm. right? Remember... China didn't really use the whole anti-NATO thing um, after the whole bombing in Yugoslavia, that all that stuff. Yeah. They kind of let the whole NATO thing die, but now they've pulled a Russia and they freaking hate NATO. So they I wanted do. to give a hark back to some of the greatest Chinese propaganda that makes NATO and the U.S. look awesome. Yeah. So I always just want to highlight this. It's just fantastic. This is uh, yes. NATO and the U.S. just looking like a military demon, which makes me want to join that side. Yeah. I yeah. mean, who who are you going to join? The huge demon with all the cool planes and aircraft Yeah, look at carriers? that. There's like F-22 F or whatever, an uh, aircraft carrier and a huge... <laughs> Remember, uh, by the way, this was drawn by a Chinese <laughs> artist to show how evil america is yeah but it and actually NATO. looks it's, great it's used in anti-nato propaganda yeah. as well um there's another one which i absolutely love and again i have a feeling this is a psyop i have a feel, and this is my tinfoil brain mm -hmm. but it's like these artists are commissioned by the chinese government to make propaganda to make america and nato look bad but they always make it look so good yes and it got to the point where chinese people were starting to share these around and then in the comments they're like this just makes them look awesome yeah it does this <laughs> like this looks this looks incredible i want to be yeah, dude. i want to be with the eagle yeah you know what i mean 
Yeah. You, you can know, be the most peace-loving person. Like, let's say I'm a very peace-loving American, very anti-war. Sure. But I'll tell you what, I want to ride on that eagle's back. <laughs> I want to soar I, I with I kind of want freedom. that airbrushed on the side of my Trans Am or something, or on like a van incredible? or something. Yeah. You know it's what I'm amazing. Saying? <laughs> that makes me want to turn into yeah. a redneck patriot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like have a flag out yeah. of your window and stuff. Heck yeah. yeah. Look at that. Yeah, it's exactly. amazing. It's hard not to root for the bad guys when they look so badass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, that shark, it's like a megalodon with 10 sets of teeth. Yeah, it's pretty epic. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. It's Oh, it's got like the dollar is the, the lure, like a, an yeah. anglerfish, right? Yeah, something and like that. And so I guess that's a communist helicopter saving that Mung poor Wen woman. Joe, by the way. Oh, it's that's, a Meng Wen Joe. They're rescuing the Huawei oh, CFO. That's right. Okay, Which that's again, ridiculous. Making what America a look pretty thing. epic. Yeah, better watch out, commie helicopter. You know, your fuel is going to run out of it. Commie helicopter, commie helicopter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, look, you can feel whatever you want about Joe Biden, but is he not the most badass man in the world there? He's sitting on a throne of AR 15s. Yeah, it's true. That looks incredible. Looks pretty good. That's probably what he thinks when he's mumbling. Yes, yes, for sure. And that's what China thinks. Yeah. And I guess what? And that's what the Chinese government thinks. Yeah. What is Amazing. What's Uncle Sam? Oh, Uncle he's throwing Sam. like a bomber over there, I like mean, a how stealth can you, bomber. And with NATO behind yeah. him. Yeah. How can you not join the bad guys when they look so awesome? Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is going to. Chinese really... government, you got to stop promoting the U.S. <laughs> yes. Speaking of promotion, we're not affiliated, but Na, uh, Name We, mm -hmm. the Malaysian uh, rapper that has done some anti-CCP songs. It's incredibly good stuff. There is a new song just dropped. Yes. And it's... It's Year of the Dragon, eh? If you thought after all People that... People of the Dragon? He went through a hell of a thing yeah. with the Chinese government, like going after him and trying to take his stuff down and like all this kind of stuff, just because he made fun of Wu Mao. So yes. like the 50 the, Cent the, Army. The 50 yeah. Cent Army, the people, the little pinks, right? He yeah. made fun of little pinks. Mm -hmm. The people that promote the Chinese government or get paid to do so. He followed up with a song that is 10 times more offensive to the Chinese government than anything that he did before. Yeah. So this guy's talk about, he's got some chios. He's yeah, got some, yeah, so he's some got real some, cojones. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, it's called The People of the Dragon. It's um, it's about the Year of the Dragon 2024 Happy New Year song, but it's, uh, I just highly recommend you go yeah, check go it check out. Yeah, go check it out. You linked it, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, and again, we can't play it. We only play a couple seconds because we're not affiliated. We're not like promoting. <laughs> Probably get us um, out of there so you can see the subtitles. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> we don't have like, <laughs> like, <laughs> play, like a billion seconds of oh, it. Oh, sure, right? sure. So you can go, go check, check it out. out. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. It's got English subtitles, by the way. Yeah, let's get into the next seg segment of the show, which of course is uh, Worldview. <coughs> this is where we cough and then talk about... Uh, <laughs> Everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. That was this, by the way, for all you tinfoils out there, that was his secret cough that he coughs to tell me a secret message. And I can tell by the tonality. <laughs> oh, of the oh cough. really? Yeah. yeah. Mm. That was a good one. I, I agree. I okay. Agree. Yeah, good. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it then. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. So we have China, Russia, disguise attack threats posed by their satellites, US says. And here's the deal we've covered this uh, in the past. You covered it on your channel in mm -hmm. the past. And it's pretty important because there's an updated uh, document from the U.S. that talks about these, it's kind of the future of warfare, really. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is China has these, um, China has these satellites yeah. that have uh, the, the dual ability. Use. Yeah, it's called the dual, let me just want to pull up a quote here. Okay, All right. Um, it says the dual use nature of some spacecraft, such as Chinese satellites like Shijian 17 and 21, uh, makes counter space tests or hostile activity difficult to detect, attribute, or mitigate. And this is the Space Force, by the way, of the US. It's pretty epic Space Force. Yeah. Wow. yeah. You, just, I, you're the space guy. I know. It's, it sounds a little lame, but I get it. You've got an Air Force, right? Gotta have a Space Force. But, but hang on a second. You don't have a Sea Force. You have the Navy. Yes, I know, but it's got a name, right? I believe if it was called Sea Force, I would appreciate it more. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, sea Force. It's pretty awesome. Land Force instead of the Army. What's what's? Would that not be cool? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's kind of weird. Surely it should have its own name. I, I don't know what you call, call it, but you know. Um, the report said China and Russia are designing and testing counter space weapons to deny, deny, disrupt, or destroy satellites and space services. So here's the deal. China's yeah. denying all this stuff. Uh, of course. And uh, the funny thing is, is that there's been some uh, CG footage released in the past here that we can see what they do. Mm -hmm. 
So basically what happens is they have these claws mm -hmm. and some or some sort of net and there's some sort of there's well, other there's devices. Gra grappling, right? they've got grappling, grappling capabilities. Hooks, yeah. This I released this in my video ages ago, but they, they actually tracked one of these satellites. Yeah. Grabbed um a non functioning Chinese satellite. It was a Russian actually, satellite. Yeah, was it did they grab a Russian satellite? Oh, no, they, no, they grabbed an, another that was Chinese another, yeah. another one. They grabbed a Chinese satellite and then actually like disposed of it, like threw it into yeah. a um, you know threw it out so it would uh, get destroyed. Yeah, another one of the weapons, anti-weapon, anti-satellite satellite weapons that they tested, uh, ejected an object near a Russian satellite. That was a different weapon. Yeah. So there's, there is multiple different oh, weapons. Oh, yeah, there's, it's interesting. They've got all these kind of uh, hostile satellites, it's so to speak. It's in there, actually. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's the net. There, yeah, so... We have high-power microwaves, so you mm -hmm. strap a Kenmore on there, <laughs> turn it up to like well, I mean, you can, you can fry electronics and yeah, all sorts of things sure. on another satellite, right? Radio frequency jammers, mm -hmm. lasers, lasers, chemical chemicals. sprayers. What do you do in like spraying vinegar? Oh, think about it. If you get uh, like Hydrochloric some acid. kind of caustic acid or something, oh. it'll just melt. You know, look, satellites are made out of very flimsy things. Yeah. Because, you know, be light and stuff. it's got to be light. But think about it like your solar sails and things like that. Yeah. You know, they have to unfold and they're very, very fragile. Yeah. It just takes a little something to that makes damage sense. them, right? Yeah. Kinetic killer vehicles, in other words, like a kamikaze. Uh, Satellite that just rams another one. Yeah. And then robotic mechanisms like grappling arms and things like that. You know, they've got all these technologies and it's always dual use. They'll be like, oh, it's for science. Yeah. So the, the response <laughs> is yeah. that uh, this is Wang Wenbin. I, I, every time I hear him talk, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Like... It's like a. Wang yeah. Wenbin, uh, mm -hmm. he says in, in English, it says, uh, committed to uh, China is committed to using outer space in a peaceful manner while they develop literal radio frequency jammers, lasers, chemical sprayers, and kinetic kill vehicles to literally remove and throw satellites. Well, the fact is, it's not conjecture. Like no. I said, that footage I showed earlier is something that I did in a video yeah. like a year ago or so. But it's actually been tracked. They yeah. have actually taken satellites yeah. out of orbit, yeah. grabbed them, and thrown them away, yeah. and destroyed them. It's pretty like video yeah. game. -esque. I mean, they did destroy their own satellite, to be yeah, fair, yeah, yeah. like a well, failing a, weather satellite. It's a test, right? But the fact that they can use their satellites to destroy other satellites means in a warfare situation, it's very dangerous. Because, you know, like, for instance, the US Army relies on GPS. For navigation. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's in there. So, I mean, imagine you just go and destroy some GPS satellites. Suddenly, the, the military won't know where to go. It'll be yeah. like, turn left <laughs> in 300 meters to yeah. the battlefield. Yeah. But instead, it'll be like, sorry, no connection. Yeah. Except it would say yards. Oh, yeah, um, whatever. The U.S. has been hyping up the China threat in outer space and smearing China. And I kid you not, he said smear. That's <laughs> smear. our favorite word yeah. that the Chinese government Pay uses. Pay more smear. Yeah. Uh, he said on a regular press briefing. So this is just an update, and it, it's more comprehensive this time. Um, I know you covered it before. Now the document's fully comprehensive, Good. so you can read into it's linked all in that. It's linked in the description. linked in the description. Cool. Definitely right. check that out. Sorry, right. we've got to move things along. We're on a schedule, you know? Yeah, we're on a schedule here. What's this? Uh, let's have a look. Let... Okay, so do you remember Should when... We... Yeah. Well, we could just read this. Biden said there's a national emergency over the threat of advancement by China. So this is a throwback because it leads into something new that just happened. Okay. Uh, it's, there's a flag. The executive order would require the U.S. Tre Treasury to be notified of China China investments in, and there's a, there's an important list that's about to be expanded. Okay. Investments in what? Semiconductors and microelectronics, mm -hmm. right? We know the Chips Act. Yeah. Quantum information technologies and artificial intelligence systems. So these are things that the U.S. government is concerned that China is going to have too much control over in the future, right? Sure. Uh, whether it's through intellectual property theft or contracts that shouldn't be divulged to yeah. the Chinese government or Chinese government affiliated entities, right? This has become a problem that has crept up on a lot of countries that are too late to the game to figure yeah. this out, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's just because this kind of technology is so imperative to everyone's future that it's important that a nation's security doesn't depend on something that an adversarial nation maybe is controlling for bad purposes. Yeah. And so this um, this is kind of being proposed to be expanded in a way because there's a lot of problems with China controlling genetic information of Americans. And yeah. this is something I want to show you. Um, you can skip forward. Really? Yeah. This is not part but, of this. Here it is. Um, so I like those chip pick and place machine things, though. It's interesting to watch. What do you mean? You know, <laughs> you know? this is definitely what you want. I, know. I assure. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, U.S. lawmaker moves bill to ban Chinese biotech firms from federal contracts, alleging complicity, complicity, com, Plicity yes, with complicity. military. Bill cites Chinese entities such as Third Military Medical University, Key Laboratory, and High Altitude Medicine as examples of espionage tools of the Communist Party. The Biotech Index, which tracks the 50 biggest companies in biotech, pharmaceuticals, and medical devices, tumbled 5.4%. It's always tied to the markets. Yep. Here's the deal. There are a lot of companies in China that are tied to either the military mm -hmm. or tied to very, very nefarious purposes mm -hmm. that rely on the export of Americans' genetic data into China. And there's a problem with that. And if you just play, you can just play the whole thing. I just got to say, you, one thing that you have to understand as well is that the Chinese companies, you say there are a lot of companies here, all Chinese companies are tied to the Communist Party of China. Yes, but there are some that are direct. It's not, it's not like there's no degree of separation. Yeah, anymore. yeah, it's actually is just their I, company. I have proof of that. All right. Just wanted to tell you guys, in case you didn't know, yeah. but every single Chinese company by law in China must capitulate to the Chinese government. If they request data or they want to know the user's information or they want to know anything from that company, they must hand it over. They cannot refuse. Yes, correct. But there's ones that have just straight up nefarious purposes yeah. here. Right. So mm -hmm. a while back, I covered this video about um, the Chinese companies that are responsible for gen American genetic information yes. and how that is potentially linked to genetic based DNA based weapons in the future. And this is what the scary part is, is there was a paper put out by the PLA in China mm. about how to use people's genetic information based on their race based on other key factors of their d DNA makeup to do things to them to disable them, basically. Yeah, biological warfare. It's biolog literally biological warfare. It is. Warfare. It's biological warfare based on genetics. Mm. And so when you have those thesis papers out there that kind of yeah. say, here's an idea that we should pursue, it's basically like a call to the Chinese government to pursue this, right, from the, from, from the army. Yeah. Then you have a bunch of PLA-linked companies that are trying to get Americans' to DNA. Then you start to think, wait a minute, wait yeah. a minute, yeah. Yeah. right? So you can look at some of these, right? The one in context here that is being under, you know, put under the microscope right now in terms of creating this new bill in the U.S. is uh, Wuxi, right? Wuxi is a, uh, a genetic or biotech company in China. Yes. And you can see here, like, they're the biggest one, BGI, which was connected to the PLA, um, has client John hospital Hopkins University, Mount Sinai Hospital. Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, uh, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, and Complete Genomics. Right. So here's the deal. You have Wuxi Healthcare and 23andMe, a big company, right? If yeah. you go to the next slide here, you'll see what happened. There is in 2015, and this is off of the website of 23andMe, um, I have no... I can't say you can go to a certain source to see that they handled this specific DNA code. But what I can say is they invested a hundred something million dollars, Wuxi, the genetic code company, yeah. into 23andMe. Mm -hmm. And that was a public statement from, from 23andMe yeah. themselves. So that's just one little example. The big ones that we saw um, when we were looking before, I remember we saw there was like pregnancy The pregnancy tests. testing. Now, this, this has been something that's so irresponsible mm -hmm. on behalf of not only governments but Go also back. these yeah. companies right guys the idea that for instance pregnancy tests that were being offered in america mm -hmm. were taking the genetics of the mothers that were getting the tests mm -hmm. and sending them to china yeah is horrendous. I mean, that shouldn't have happened in the first place, but especially now knowing what we know now, this is, needs to be nipped in the bud ASAP, right? Well, the fact that any personal data, specifically something so personal as a person's DNA mm. and genetics is being sold or given to the Chinese government is appalling. Yeah. So this source here, um, you can find it's actually at the bottom of this particular clip, but it's in the original video on my channel. But anyway, long story short, some of the scary things, I just want you to play through the end here. We can read some of the quotes from that paper, which mm -hmm. gives a lot more context to this whole situation. Yeah. Um, can you just play it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll play so yeah there's the uh yeah there's the link so if we look at the the original paper that was put out by the pla it was called civil military fusion yeah right? i love that uh in other words just military yes which means that the military controls what the civilians can do in process mm -hmm. and they can have everything yes and it's the idea that they can cooperate to further the country's military goals whether that be nefarious or not yeah 
Um, so some of the original quotes from this actual paper translated into English are very, very alarming. You can read it. Okay. The weaponization of Just biological bodies will your pace. <laughs> okay, <really. clears throat> yeah. will become a reality in the future. Biotechnology will make biological weaponization a reality. It's kind of like, this is going to happen anyway. We might as well take advantage of it. Yeah. New non-traditional forms of confrontation, such as biological attack, biological destruction, and ecological control will become possible. Biotechnolo biotechnological weapons can cause destruction that is both more powerful and more civilized than caused by conventional killing methods like gunpowder or nuclear weapons. How is it more civilized? It's dystopian as hell. Yeah. What, make everyone die of a, you, well, you'll see. a thing? This is in the PLA's paper. The increased pace of development of modern biotechnology tells us that the day on which we will begin to make full military use of its advantages is not too far off. And then, we believe that command of military biotechnology is a reasonable scientific presumption, not a scientific illusion. And then, a bunch of dudes running next to water-filled rocket launchers over there. You say something about that. So it's <laughs> well, you know what I mean? <laughs> Through gene manipulation, we can attack or injure one or more key human uh, physiological functions, the ability to learn, memorize, keep one's balance, or perform fine motor activities. Starting to get a little creepy. Yeah. This is not like uh, an unknown paper, by the way. This is publicly published. Yes. When attacking an enemy with biotechnological military weapons, we could cause psych physiological dysfunction by producing an ultra-micro damaging effect to a gene's or a protein's structure and functioning. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Precision injury and ultra-micro damage are two vulnerating methods based on genomics and proteom proteomics. Unlike weapons that use ammunition whose damaging effects can only be ascertained after shooting, we can test in a laboratory the degree of damage biotechnological weapons produce. You can also test in a laboratory the damage that a bullet can do, my yeah. friend. It's not that difficult. Get this is all about like making justification for this <laughs> yeah. horrific warfare. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's awful. It is. It's terrible. <clears throat> Which makes you even more worried when they keep uncovering these like bio yeah, labs, labs in and California stuff, yeah. and stuff. We can control the degree of injuries and damage produced and even provide an antidote or cure, a vaccine, a counter vulnerating agent or a piece of bioinformation. Providing such an an anodyne. anodyne to our enemies would re represent real mercy in, quote in quotation horrifying? marks. Is that horrifying? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's terrible. A bunch of soldiers walking around. Anyway, it's, it's just that's fine. That's doing enough. doing nothing. To cap this important. off, I mean, you can see why people are coming up with laws that maybe would restrict something like this. Yeah, <laughs> you know of course. I mean? So, like, I don't think anyone should be shipping your DNA over to an adversarial nation I, that has these papers in public. I would be livid to find out that my wife's pregnancy test yeah. ended up being sent to the Chinese government to be put into their database of let's kill these foreign ethnic people yeah except my wife is chinese so she's probably okay i never know yeah but still they can it can be tweaked much further than that, yeah china should not hesitate if it should have def have to defend itself to use as many means of warfare as possible including weapons that are not permitted by international law and the rules of war such as chemical and biological weapons i always talk about this but it's like the intent like i think the intent is clear like you can't do you can't say that that's that's outlandish yeah but that's an open published paper by the pla general or something isn't yeah, it if it is. i remember correctly it is. i remember when we covered this a long time yeah. ago but you know this is a creepy horrible side of warfare that nobody ever wants to get down to yeah. but the chinese government certainly is capable of ignoring international laws and international rules yeah as we've seen time and time again yeah oh we're not going to militarize the south china sea Oh, those those military airstrips and missile rocket launches and stuff, that's not a militarizing. That's just us putting military stuff on an island that we built. Yeah. 
So yeah, anyway, I mean, to be the be all and end all is like I could see why an acceleration of something like that would be necessary. Yeah. If you think about it, you know, it's I mean, whether or not it's being used for that, the fact that that exists, that document exists is a little alarming. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the end <laughs> of the day, guys, we just always have to be cautious when dealing with, uh, you know, the Chinese Communist Party. It's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. But, you know, I'm so, so glad you chose such a high note to end our segment. You know, on. I just thought it was it's so kind of important. Uh, so it makes me feel so happy about I the know. weekend. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I know we're on a schedule here. So let's yeah. uh, let's move on to the Q&A. Before we do that, I kind of want to lift our spirits a little bit. So we got one last thing that we just have to show one more time. All right. You ready for yes. it? You are not the same age. What a wonderful not song. Right How come I've never heard it before? Stop touching her! Please, please don't touch her. Please don't. Yeah, no, please. please. Do not touch her. How come I've never heard it before? Please, please, please. Stop touching her! You are not the same age. Please, do not touch her. Please, please, do not touch her. What a wonderful song. I love him um, vibing <laughs> like out to vibing the song, out. like as he walks slowly. Yeah, Adam anyway, loves that. was that. from our last last episode, <laughs> um, yeah. which was very funny. Anyway, moving on. Yes, let's move on to Yamcha, guys. This is the Q&A section of our show where we answer your questions and you question our answers. By the way, just to let you guys know that we specifically put aside a lot of material we were going to put in the show yeah. today in order to cover the piano gate because it needed a, a longer segment. So we have a hilarious, more hilarious Chinese propaganda and, and fun stuff for you next week. So just so you know, it's coming back. It's coming. So uh, it's Friday, time to loosen the tie. Hope you guys are all relaxed, going to have a fantastic one. I mean, it's weekend after all. It is. You know, like, I, I know everybody just can't wait to get home and just chill. You know what I got to do when I get home? Mm. It's fix a re leaky radiator in my wife's ah, car. Ah, That's going nice. to be awesome, isn't it? It's going to be really nice. It's going to be st so freaking fantastic. Enjoy yourself. Especially that car of hers is so horribly complicated because it's a fairly new car. Right. When it's like 2013 and when they started to make things really complicated. Right. So leaky radiator on that's going to take me like all night just to freaking find where it's leaking. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. David Lopan, thank you for the memberships. But anyway, I was getting somewhere, remember? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. It's that part of the show where you really want to get it over with and I don't. No, I don't want to. I want to get it started. <laughs> You're, that's the difference. You see where I'm talking? I, I yeah. want to talk to the audience. You want to hear yourself talk. <laughs> I don't want to hear myself talk. <laughs> that, I want I'm to trying tell, to get this going. I want to tell people how it works, okay? okay? For those of you who may be new here, this is our Q&A section, and we keep it up live. Yes. We keep it up over the weekend, but we cut it out of the show on Monday. Mm. However, if you are part of our patron over at patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts, any tier, you get to see the whole show. Yes. And it would be remiss for me not to mention that we have a VIP show on Monday. Yes. We didn't have one this past Monday because some, we were doing something yeah. special. But we're going to make up for this yeah. coming week. Guys, we have a fantastic VIP show. It's so much fun. Yeah. It's just about having a laugh. Yeah. Please join us if you have the means at our Patreon link that you've just seen. There's a link down below. 